Hey everyone, Luna Marie Wolf here, and I'm sorry if I look like crap because I just got off work. Well, not like just got off work, but I got off work, went to Walmart. Reminding you, it's Black Friday today, so. There wasn't a lot of crowds, but there was a little bit of crowds. I was on my feet all day. No break. I'm so exhausted. And I didn't sleep very well last night, so there's another thing. But my feet hurt. I literally just got into the dorm. I The only thing I did was like take off my mask, use the restroom, take off my nasty shoes and socks, and throw my socks into the laundry hamper, which is like over here, like past that. But just off work, my voice may sound a little hoarse. It's because I talk nearly all day at work. I'm so... I, only, I just want to say that, like, you Walmart people who work at Walmart, who have to deal with the actual Black Friday rush and, like, all of the big-name stores that their employees have to work with the, like, Black Friday rush, I... I sympathize <laughs> with you because I worked from 10 a.m. to what time did I get out? Five. I worked a 10 to 5 shift, and I work in a mall. It was packed. I can't even believe Black Friday because I've been to Black Friday once. The Black Friday shoppers blow my mind. They blow my mind. I've only been Black Friday shopping once, and I never want to do it again, and I haven't. But I was going to talk to you guys about why I've been so distant on this channel and all my other social media. I don't even think I've uploaded anything onto my Tumblr. No, I mean, I had made my Tumblr account, forgot I made the Tumblr account for this channel, but here we are. Um, really haven't done anything on the Instagram anything like that so um I've had some relationship issues some family issues and some mental health issues as well as actual physical well-being issues um I'm not gonna go into detail about the family stuff because you know family stuff I don't really want to put on YouTube because that's kind of personal I'm okay with talking about myself but my family members you know I'd like to get their permission to talk about it but I feel like that's a sensitive topic and I don't want to talk about it like on YouTube because YouTube's public I my family isn't a really big thing about making our family problems public because family problems are supposed to be kept within the family and if need be go to a therapist if you can't solve it yourself or whatever you're doing isn't working but just just believe me when I say there's been some family issues that have been going on um mental health issues um definitely do tie in with family issues but they also tie in with me going to college and being kind of thrown into this adult world where I don't know what I'm doing, no one else knows what they're doing, and we're just kind of struggling along the way. It's all we can do. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to, like, discipline myself to actually sleep, eat well, and not spend 24 hours watching YouTube videos and playing Minecraft is actually a lot harder than you would think, and actually getting a job and getting schoolwork done I think the biggest problem I had to overcome was actually doing schoolwork. I'm, I love learning. College is a different experience. It, it doesn't take the joy out of learning. I've always loved learning. I haven't picked up a book since high school, and it's two years. Probably, yeah, it's been two years almost since I've read a book. Now, I don't have any free time to read books, but the only books I've read are the books like, books that I need to for class. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Also, coronavirus hit, and that was, um, 
really scary because my sister has a compromised immune system. I have asthma, although it's not as bad as it used to be. My, uh, I have heart problems, which I don't have, I have a quote unquote weak heart. I have an S2 heart skip, heart skip, which means my heart skips a beat every now and then. So it doesn't beat correctly. That's a fun total new thing that I can talk about later if you guys want me to. But I was scared because of the coronavirus. We went on lockdown, um, but I lost my job. I I was thinking about getting into YouTube, you know, um, but coronavirus happened and I had just not just gotten this job. I had gotten this job in October of last year and then coronavirus hit in like January I think that's when we all went kinda into lockdown I'm not I can't remember when we kinda went into lockdown but I know we went into whenever I say lockdown I don't mean complete total lockdown but where I was in lockdown to where I wasn't going anywhere because I was afraid of being trapped in a state like in a different state that uh would go into lockdown. Um, I live in the Arkansas, Oklahoma area, so they didn't really go into lockdown, but they were kind of acting like they were going to. You know, it's just, Arkansas is more strict than Oklahoma is. If you've seen it, Arkansas has a, a mandated mask law where you have to wear your mask outside. You will get in trouble because of it, but Oklahoma does not, which is two completely, totally different worlds. But I, I didn't lose my job. Uh, my job got closed because the mall was closed. So the mall shut down. Sorry about that. Camera stopped recording. But we were still employed by the company. We were just laid off. So I tried to file for unemployment. I couldn't because there was a period of time where I worked as a waitress. And I found out that my employer wasn't taking out... Uh, taxes for that unemployment taxes so i was which, which it's illegal by the way to do this but um i didn't i couldn't get any unemployment benefits because that period of time i worked as a waitress it was the time where they were drawing the unemployment benefits from and so i was like well crap well i'm out of job i still have bills to pay even though i'm i'm not really at risk I still don't want to transfer it to my family because part of my family's at risk. Some of my family members have lupus and stuff like that, really, you know, and my Nana is, you know, she's older. I don't want to, you know, but I was really scared because I was like, I don't want to transfer this in and I was, I was honestly really scared about it because my parents thought that we were going to go into this total lockdown. But thankfully we didn't. We may, but we may in like the future, but as for right now, we're not. So I had to get a job. Uh, I had to get a, a job at uh, where I was living at in Tallahena. And I had to work at a gas station. And I worked opening at a gas station, which means I got up at 5. I worked 6 to, I think it was 2 in the afternoon. Number one, those are brutal hours. Number two, I'm not a morning person by anything, any, no. I cannot wake up for alarms for the life of me. I have to have my boyfriend call me sometimes to wake me up because I sleep through any alarm. I will unconsciously turn off the alarm and it's insane. But I had to get a job and I was working at the gas station and then my work pretzel maker over in Fort Smith Arkansas Tallahena Oklahoma Fort Smith Arkansas it's nearly a two-hour drive time in between the two pretzel maker called said hey we're opening back up are you able to come and work and I was like heck yeah because I get paid 1025 in Fort Smith Arkansas and I get paid seven I think it was actually I think it was right when minimum wage raised, so it was 825 in Oklahoma. So driving the two hours to Fort Smith 
paid off because I was getting $10.25 an hour as long as I worked more than two hours of shit a shift it would um, even out and I would be making money so I had I was working two jobs during the summer I saved up I was able to pay off all of the debt that I had on my credit card because there was a couple of months where I was out of a job so I still had to pay car still had to pay on my credit card and in order to pay on my credit card I had to pull out of my savings account so I was able to pay off my credit card and pay uh, all of my insurance for a year and I had just lost my car oh my car I got a car and December the December before uh, the coronavirus you know stuff got big um, I blew a, I think it was a head gasket, I don't know, it was something to do with my radiator fluid, um, I don't know, my car was smoking, kind of, I thought it was on fire, I was trying to drive home from work, it was 10.30 at night, and I was driving, I was 30 minutes into my two hour drive, <laughs> and so I had to pull over, call my dad frantically, my boyfriend had to come and help me. It was insane, but I lost my car, so I had to get the tags, uh, the registration, you know, all that kind of stuff for this new car, which is a 2009. It is sweet as all heck. I love it so much, but I had to pay off that stuff that I had on the credit card. I also had to pay off um, my insurance because I switched insurance because my progressive insurance shot from $89 to nearly $200 a month when I switched cars and I couldn't pay that especially since I was out of job I couldn't um, I really didn't want my parents to make any payments they said they were going they, they said like we'll, we'll pay for this but I didn't want to do that I know they were struggling too my dad was in risk of being laid off because he's in the oil field and the gas prices dropped so much that he was, you know, he was safety manager. And that's, that's, a, that's high, that's, it's not really high up, but it's, you know, it's up there. But I didn't want to take any money from them, so I was like, okay, I'll just pay this off whenever I get jobs, whenever I get a job. <laughs> and then we get out of this coronavirus stuff. Well, we're not completely out of it, but out of it to where I could still go back to school. So went back to school this fall and I was having a little bit of trouble. I know I made a video about it on here where I was having some problems with my speaking. Uh, sometimes I would stutter and stuff like that. And uh, sometimes I would say words and they wouldn't come out correctly. And I don't know if this ties into what I'm about to talk about, but with my health problems, um, my asthma's good. It's doing fine. My heart's doing good. It's doing fine. Uh, I got put on birth control because of some bad period and, like, female stuff that was going on, and it kind of solved that. I have to get off of my birth control, too, so... Mm. Because I went to a uh, optometrist appointment for my contacts because I hadn't been in, like, four years, and I was like, well, you know what? The economy's doing better. And I actually have some extra cash, so I might as well go in and see how much my eyes have changed. It's been four years. I should have been going every year, but life gets life gets in the way sometimes. Um, so I went, and my uh, doctor was asking about my migraines, and I mean, he did he did the normal contact stuff. Um, He's really impressed with how little my eyesight has degraded. It did degrade a bit, but not a lot. I think it was negative 0.50 that it degraded from the, from four years prior, and that's that's really good. Um, but he found whenever he was talking about my migraines, I have optical migraines, which means that I lose my vision whenever I get a migraine and I had been put on some medication because of that because the medication I was taking every day uh, was not working and this was kind of a this medication uh, that I'm on right now was kind of the last 
medication that my actual doctor can give me because none of the other medications have worked and this one seems to be working s this medication that I'm on seems to be working but it is a I think it's called a savior um, it's where you take you take it whenever you feel a migraine coming on and it stops it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but whenever my uh, optometrist optometrist was asking about my migraines, I was like, yeah, it it just kind of bothers me that I lose my vision completely whenever I have my migraines. And he kind of stopped. He was like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> and come to find out, with optical migraines, you're supposed to get an aura. So that means where your vision gets kind of hazy. You could, uh, you could also go into what's called tunnel vision where, it, and you know, it looks like you're looking down a tunnel where there's, like, black or gray fuzzy, and then there's, you can actually see. You know, you know what I'm talking about whenever I say tunnel vision. It happens right before you pass out. Um, and that is it. You're not supposed to get total blackness, what I was getting whenever I have my migraines. So he ran a couple tests. Probably really expensive test now that I think about it. Those are some fancy things. I got to wear an eye patch at one point, and that was really cool. But he found that there was something pressing against the optical nerve on my eyes. So let me get let me get a piece of paper real quick. So your optic nerve, he actually showed me your optic nerve. I mean, I'm just going to draw like a weird, you know. Please, biology people, don't come after me. My boyfriend will see this, and if I draw this incorrectly, I'm sorry. Also, this eyeball is going to be way big to scale, so I ignore me. Okay. Whee! That's just going to be a little optic nerve. Okay. So, with these optic nerves, you have your eyeball. So, your nerve is supposed to be straight. It's supposed to dip down and then come up. Well, for my eye, it's kind of like it's reversed. So it's straight, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. So instead of having a dip like it's supposed to, it has a crest. And that means that there's something pressing up against that nerve. And whenever I get a migraine, it pinches that nerve off, and I'm losing my vision. So he said he's going to refer me to a neurologist. I'm still waiting to get back with that neurologist. Um, there's been a weird miscommunication in between files, and so we're having to, like, just figure out what's going on. And the doctor still has to review, you know, my file. But he said it could be anything as minor as there's a fluid buildup back there, or it could be something as worse as there being a tumor. Now, I don't think it's a tumor. I think it's probably fluid. Uh, whenever I go to my neurologist appointment, they'll do a spinal tap, which I'm really scared about. Mm -mm, I don't like needles. I don't like needles. Uh-uh. I can, I can give blood. I can give blood. I can watch them put the needle in me. I'm not good at shots. I don't want them to stick a needle into my spine, even though they're getting my spinal fluid to figure out what's going on with my brain. But, um, they are going to measure my, uh, spinal fluid pressure. And... If it is just fluid, uh, a spinal tap will fix it. If it's a tumor, brain surgery. It, I'm hoping it's the fluid. They're gonna run like CTs, MRI, all this kind of stuff. I've had this optical migraines since I was in sixth grade and I am a sophomore in college right now. Whenever I, they first found out that I had optical migraines, it was that tunnel vision, but then it slowly progressed into completely losing my vision. The MRIs and CT, no, it was an MRI. The MRI that they did whenever I was in sixth grade and then again whenever I was in, uh, what was that? I was a, I think it was either a junior or senior in high school because I had an episode where I had to go to the hospital. I completely lost my vision but they didn't show any sort of tumor or anything like that on my scans so I I really do think it is some sort of fluid buildup and that it could just be really easy quickly solve done you know good and done get over with it you know um, I really don't think it is a tumor so we're just gonna hope 
hope and send good vibes my way that it is not. But I have had some dizzying spells where I have passed out. Um, it's okay because I think it's just because I don't eat as well as I should and I'm really stressed out because finals are literally right around the corner. Like this week right now, this Friday, like Monday to Friday is the week before finals. So everyone's bunkering down and getting ready. So it could just be because of stress. It could be because I'm not eating correctly. It could because could be because I uh, don't believe in water. I like soda. <laughs> and with I've been getting stuff done with my braces. So <sighs> this coronavirus just kind of screwed everything up. Everything for everyone's just screwed up, but, um, okay, did mental health problems, of course, stemmed from the brain, you know, finding out that there could be fluid buildup or a tumor in my brain, worst case scenario, because that's some scary stuff, um, it definitely changed my thinking, uh, it's, I kinda, I'm not trying to look at the worst in it, I'm trying to think positive, but it is really hard to think positive whenever it, whenever you are thinking of worst case scenario. You're just like, well, it could be something as easy as, hey look, spinal tap, one and done. Or it could be, I have to be awake while they perform surgery on my brain. And uh, I don't know about you, but I wish they could knock me out whenever they do that because I don't want to have to go through brain surgery and be awake. <laughs> I know you guys have all seen the video of the guy playing a violin while they're having, like, they're doing brain surgery on them. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want to feel the pressure. I didn't even like the pressure whenever they numbed my leg and put staples in it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And those were staples. That was metal into my skin, okay? That was not them. You know. <laughs> um... It definitely did change my thinking a little bit. I, uh, I definitely was, I am really thinking about worst case scenario because I do want to be prepared in case it is worst case scenario, but I'm trying to figure out how to deal with like the depression and the anxiety that's coming from this. You know? <laughs> um, but definitely having the shrimp on campus help because they really do help. And going home and seeing my cat also really helps. And there is something that we found out about Jinxie. Jinxie has a scar on her larynx, and it's why she wheezes. It was not asthma, as the Humane Society had told us. It is actually a scar that is blocking her breathing. So I'm gonna have to take her into the vet about that, but you know, whenever funds come in to do that, because I have to, I have to get myself better before I can, you know, take my cat in, which is sad to think about, but it happens. Mental health, physical health, family. Did I say anything else? I don't think I said anything else. Okay, well, yeah. Um... I've just been absent, and I do apologize, I've been trying to figure things out. Um, I'm finally getting into a rhythm, and I can finally get back to doing things that I love, like playing Minecraft and recording videos. They love talking to you guys. Um, I saw that I lost a subscriber, and I was like, tearful, I can't do anything about it. I honestly sometimes forget that I have these social media accounts that are connected to my YouTube accounts until like I get a YouTube notification like, hey, we've changed how uh, the children's content stuff is going on on YouTube. And I was like, oh yeah, I have a channel on YouTube. Or Wattpad's just like, hey, you have a new comment. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I had a Wattpad account. <laughs> like stuff like that. Or Tumblr just contacted me saying, hey, are you still alive? You have this username and you haven't been on Tumblr and like, a good while. Are you still alive? If you don't confirm this, we're gonna release your username back out into the wild. And I was like, I totally forgot I had a Tumblr. <laughs> I forgot Tumblr existed, honestly. <laughs> I never got on Tumblr. I wasn't a really big Tumblr person. But yeah, that's, it's just, 
it's crazy. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I got I got bags underneath these eyes. I am a tired college student. My roommate just moved out, and so I'm trying to get used to being alone in the dorm. All of the other people that share this uh, bathroom and sink area and uh, shower with me have almost all moved out, so I've been almost the only one here, which is really... It, it, get, it gets really lonely here sometimes, so I'm glad that my shrimp are here so I can talk to them. And definitely getting back into YouTube will definitely help me um, deal with this and talk about this and not feel as lonely as I am. But thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, you know, all that doodad YouTubers like to say. <laughs> but I will see you guys in the next video, and yeah. That's the, honestly that's all I gotta say. Um, thank you guys so much for sticking with me, even though I haven't been on this channel a lot. I haven't really been, you know, uploading. Probably most of you just forgot that you had subscribed to me, but that's okay. Um, share this video if you want this to get out here, I, out there. I don't, I don't know why you would want to, but whatever. Um. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, just ask me down in the comments. I am trying to get back into commenting on my comments a lot because I don't get them a lot and I like to make it known that I read your comments. I actually do look at them. I'm not just brushing them off and I actually want to reply to them because I know I would love it if I put a comment on a YouTuber's video and they uh, commented back because it makes me... It would make me feel involved. I know you guys want to feel involved, so. But, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>